Welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. What's hey, up, man? Hey, man. You you went out of order. No, nah, it doesn't have to be a particular order. You're supposed to go, hey, man. I said, what up? Hey, man. I don't know. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> How you doing, dude? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. I like your bird brain. Thanks, man. I can't wait till we go back. I think I got one of those in green ski. Yep. Yep. I went for orange because I didn't have an orange hoodie. Orange. Yep. Yeah, I, I like it. Uh, uh, by the way, everybody, uh, let me get the business out of the way up front. First of all, uh, thank you. Thank you to all. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank, oh, thank you, you very, very much. much. Um, it, uh, the, look, a couple of these clips have been going crazy. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, we are, uh, the numbers are going up every week. I appreciate you guys so much for the new listeners and the people who've been with us since the beginning and the people who are helping to spread the word. It's super cool. Um, I can only tell you from just, and I say this every week from my point of view, I'm so grateful to be at this point in time in my life and doing this with you. Um, I, it truly is the best, the best time of my life. So thank you all so much. Um, I, I, you know, we're in Buffalo. We leave tonight. Yep. By the time you guys hear that, hear this, we will be in Buffalo. Yep. Um, Buffalo tonight, and next week we're in Dania Beach, Florida for from, some Valentine's Day. From Wednesday to Saturday. Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> for four days. Yeah, baby. you know, Come Chad and JT are going to be down there too. Oh, yes. So th on Friday, we do the early show, they do the late show, and then we're gonna, all going to do some mushrooms together. Wait, wait, so we only have one show Friday? Yep. Gangster. Yep. Wait, wait, wait. So one show Wednesday, one show Thursday, yep. one show Friday, yep. two Saturday? Yep. Gangster. <laughs> Yeah. Fuck yeah. And Wednesday early that's early bedtime. Three or two days out of that but week. I also, love that. So it's the I love it's the perfect high time for me because I don't like to get high too late. It makes me groggy in the morning. This way we can be high at a reasonable hour. You're telling me I'm the one who usually sleeps in too late because I take my mushrooms after the meet and greet. Yes. Because the meet and greet on mushrooms stresses me the the fuck out. Me too. Nothing against nothing against anybody who's ever seen me high in the meet and greet line. It's just how my brain works. I love all of you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming out. My mushroom brain does not like doing the meet and greet, though. And I will it freaks me out. I'll tell you something else. First of all, I was down at the um, press road yesterday for the Super Bowl. I saw my buddy, Michelle Beadle. Oh, shout out, Michelle Beadle. Yo, dude. I love her. She's so fucking good at her job, oh and she's God. such a good person. And super funny. So good Holy to see crap. Beadle. I saw my buddy, Craig Gass, down there. I, I have come to really appreciate people who are good friends. Craig Gass, such a good friend, such a great comic. Um, so I met him. I met up with him down there. But I decided yesterday, dude, I have hit a point in my life where I'm, I'm like half Hunter S. Thompson, half Big Lebowski. Okay, I know the Big Lebowski reference. I don't get the Hunter S. Thompson Fe reference. Yeah, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So it, I'm, like, I'm like Hunter S. Lebowski. Because I or Big Thompson, I, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> Big Thompson is makes me laugh. Yeah, I, I Big Thompson. <laughs> Big Thompson. Because is here's funny. what I here's where I'm at. Ready where I'm at? I'm going to just start wearing the clothes that I feel like wearing. Yeah, which, which means a lot, probably more fur. I think these glasses will be on all the time. Yeah, uh, yep. I think I am the attitude. Is of me is finally. I'm just not gonna care anymore what anyone thinks, ever. Great, especially with what you're wearing. I mean, I feel like I've been doing that since I was like 15. Uh, I, yeah. I've, I've never had that problem. With I like, know you haven't. Yeah, yeah. like it, cause, because for me, it's like, you know, you always preach in, in in one of the jokes in your special as well. It's like, what? Why would you care what other people are thinking? Do you know what I'm saying? Everybody's got their own prerogative. They're going through their own world. You don't know what other people are going through. So half the time, people aren't even looking at you. And for me, I just like to wear what I want to wear. Like, it didn't matter if it matched. It didn't matter if it was a bright color. It didn't matter if I was wearing something that other people would perceive as feminine. Like, it, it, clothes are clothes. Like, I agree with clothes. For me, most of the caring what other people think has come through my art. Yeah, definitely. And I have, it's gotten better and better as years have gone on. But it's hard when you're a young artist not to care about what other people think because those other people are the people who are going to buy your shit. Right, 100%. I get that. And, and But what you realize as you get older 
is they're going to buy your shit because of who you actually are. Correct. Not because of who you're pretending to be. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is a long line because what you don't want is somebody to be like, oh, I fucking, I can't believe it. Fucking, but you're not, you're not. How, how you dress doesn't define. Uh, like, we're past, we're the, past dress the dress. We're past just the dress just like anything. Dress. I'm talking about the art. And so, and so like you worry about it but until you realize you can't. Yeah. You just have to do what you like. And I've, I'm, I've decided I've taken that over in life and I'm really looking forward to this chapter. I, it's going to take, I think, probably a few months for me to really be able to be 100% consistent with it all the time, but I'm I'm pretty fucking psyched. Good. Good. I'm pretty fucking psyched. Yeah, I know we're past the close and it was a brighter thing or like a broader thing, but to quote RuPaul, we're all born naked and the rest is drag. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter for what you put on after that. Like we're all the same kind of people. It's just like, it doesn't dude, matter what you're putting on. If it's you just, go a step further, a hundred years from now, nobody's going to fucking remember a single one of us. There are very few people who are remembered. So if you, they're not, gonna, so just who gives a fuck? And if also you're going to be remembered as a dude who didn't care what he wore, still remembered. Yeah. I think you're stuck on the clothes. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I am stuck on the clothes. I don't know why. You're stuck on the clothes. I'm stuck on the clothes because, like, because I I know for like what you preach in your art is like, and I've seen it over the over the years. It, it's it, like that's what you 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 do. You preach that. You preach like, but dude, not, I'm talking more important. It's art and life, right? That's yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's yeah, like yeah. that's what you're preaching in your everyday, like even in your comedy or to people who you meet. Is like people aren't gonna pay attention. Nobody really gives a shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just started out with the clothes. That's where my head got wrapped <laughs> yeah. around it. Because you're good at preaching the first part, but then the wearing what you want is where, that's where you lose it a little bit. That's I, why I think I was stuck on the, I don't know. on the clothes part. I'm pretty loosey-goosey with what I wear. I mean, right now I'm wearing a Lebowski sweater with Hunter S. Thompson glasses. Actually. So. Yeah. <laughs> Are you wearing sweats or jeans? I'm wearing sweats, no underwear, different Ew. socks. Why are you wearing, dip? why are you wearing no underwear? Huh? Why are you wearing no underwear? Um, I just need to buy some new ones. So you don't have any clean ones? Uh, you know, the, the washer dryer situation at the house got a little fuck fuck. And so we had to buy a new washer dryer and get rid of the ones. So I haven't had a washer dryer in like a week. Cool. Do you know who does have a washer dryer and has been in town with you all week? Yeah, you. Me. Yeah, but you live like 25 minutes away. So what's more important? Driving 25 minutes to wash your clothes or going commando in public? Well, I mean, nobody knows I, I'm going commando right now. You do. We do. Matt yeah, does. Matt does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what Matt doesn't know is that I don't have my pants pulled all the way up, so I'm just butthole on his chair. Gross. Yo, you sanitize good. Yeah. Do you have you ever gone bare butthole on a on a like a couch, a leather couch or leather or a leather seat? No. It's, ah! No. No. Yeah, no, it's no, not no. comfortable. No, uh, that doesn't sound comfortable at all. No, it's not you, comfortable. But like another question, have you willingly gone commando before? Like you just look at it and go, yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to wear no underwear today. Like all, do you all the time? See, I haven't hit that stage yet. I, I, only go, I think more young dudes do it than old dudes. Oh, I definitely don't do that. Never in my life have I willingly looked down and go, you know what? I'm not wearing any underwear today. I'm going to tell you why I think more young dudes do it than old dudes. Because we're, we don't like doing laundry more than old people do? No, I think it has to do with one, old dudes, the, the, listen, everybody, I'm going to give you some anatomy and I'm going to use technical terms. But old dudes, their dicks drip. And, and so you, you, when you need a little, you need, a, you need something to catch the water. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the dick doesn't turn off after you pee. So you put it back in your pants and you're like, oh, there was a little more pee in there. And so it just drippity drip and it's kind of uncomfortable down your bare leg. I've, 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 I've been wearing loose jeans before, gone pee, put the dick back in the pants, and then felt a drip on my shin. And I've been like, I need, I need tighter pants and a tighter dick. <laughs> because it's a little loosey-goosey. That has definitely happened. Not only that, your balls are a little more unorganized as you get older. Okay. So there's a little That's such an interesting choice of words. <laughs> Your balls are unorganized. They are. They're 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 in a tighter grouping when you're younger. Yeah, but I feel like that's not unorganized. Well, they're all kind of they can crisscross and they hang down. They could probably split sides. They get long and and loose, and so you kind of want them up and tight in your underwear. 
Right. So right. why would you not wear underwear? This is what I'm saying. This is why younger dudes, I think, probably go commando more than old dudes. Oh, because less to have to keep track of? You're not dripping and your nuts aren't unorganized. I like how you stuck with unorganized. That's that's well, the, I mean, that's, that's, the word, that's the word you're sticking with. Yeah, still. because they're all just like they're not in an orderly fashion, and one might be up here, you talk, and the other one's you're, down You're talking here. about them like there's 17 of them, like they're a platoon. There's <laughs> feel, there's, <laughs> there's just <laughs> it's like you're a drill sergeant. A you're platoon trying to, of trying nuts. To keep my nuts in order. No, no, it's just it's just two of them. <laughs> like. Is Wait till you get older. You'll know what I'm talking oh, about. I feel like I'm getting older by the day. Nah, this... dude, you can't control them. You, you. I mean, I don't know for sure, but at 27, almost in in a, in a month. Yeah, dude, I remember 27 year old nuts. They're high and tight, like a good haircut. You shouldn't remember 27 year old nuts. Why not? I, from 27 years ago, I remember them fondly. That's not how you, what you should be saying either. My, I don't remember. Well, you, you don't think I can allow to remember my nuts see, fondly? You didn't ever say, I remember my nuts. You just said, I remember 27-year-old nuts fondly. Do you see where I'm going with that? Well, I mean, just because you're you're a pervert. I was raised by you. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I think the way I do is because of you. <laughs> That's probably true. Not probably. <laughs> very... <laughs> Very accurate and very true. Yes, a hundred percent. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. There's. You think if I was raised by a mom more, I wouldn't be. I would no, be thinking that way. You no, definitely wouldn't. Nope. Nope. I, I, I definitely get that because of you. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. I think that's what you're getting at, right? Sure. I, I mean, don't know. I don't know if that's a thank you or or not, but. Yeah, you should definitely imply and say my 27 year old nuts next time, and not just okay. say. Because out of context, if I were to clip that and you just said, mm, yeah, I remember 27-year-old nuts fondly. I, oh, yeah. That's that's my point. It's like, yeah, I added fondly after it. And what I was, if I was doing this when I said it? So, by the way, <laughs> by the way, that is like the third time you've done that on the podcast. On yeah, three but nobody's separate, ever clipped it. On three separate episodes. I clipped it. I clipped the first time where I made you do it like 17 times yeah. back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then you were like, but then you were like, remember you grabbed like that and you were like, is it just one big dick? And I see how many times I could get you to do it. And you did it like 12 times. It was pretty good. Well, I mean, if you want to see that gem, everybody, I'm sure it's on one of our Instagram feeds. It's, <laughs> it's in one of the drop boxes with all the clips. I'll find it again. Um, well, listen, dude, what an interesting way to start the podcast. I guess so. Um, how are you? You good? I'm good, man. Yeah, I'm you good. Looking, you looking forward to uh, Buffalo? I'm looking forward to Buffalo. Looking forward to going to the birth pl the birthplace of Buffalo Wings. Oh, we can go. We'll go to both. I think it's the Anchor Bar. Yeah, that's what, that's what you. I think you mean Lee talked about. Yeah. Lee Syatt will be with us this weekend mm -hmm. as well in Buffalo. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to. Uh, I'm excited to go. I've never been we to Buffalo. I don't think I've done. No, I've done comedy in Jersey. I've never done comedy in New York. Fuck yeah, dude! So it'll be a fun new one for me. I'm pretty excited. Let and also, the diet rules are off this weekend. Okay. Um, let me just say <laughs> comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. We are everywhere, everybody. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. The two dates I would like you to circle, and I look at the podcast, so I know our two out of the five biggest cities for us are New York City and Los Angeles. I know you are there. I know you are listening. You guys ask me all the time, how can we help you guys? Because we don't have ads on here. How can we help you? I can tell you how you can help us. Look, New York is the Gramercy Theater and LA is Netflix is a joke. These are both things that will make us look so good if you buy those tickets early. Mm -hmm. You ask how you can support us, this is the way to do it. It's not, and it's not charity, everybody, because you're going to come see a fucking banger of a show. Absolutely. And at both places, I can tell you, we, I will have some pretty cool guests. So, oh, really? Come. Buy those tickets. Help your boys out. Go to ComedianJoshWolf.com for tickets. If the Netflix link isn't on there, go to Netflix as a joke um, and buy those tickets. That would be amazing for us. Let me start this week off. Do you think? First of all, I saw the Grammys. I don't watch the Grammys anymore. Uh, I watched because of Jelly Roll. Okay, fair enough. So I my rule with award shows in general we go is I will watch if somebody I know and like is up for an award. Sure. I, I would like to support them. And Jelly is Jelly Roll. I call him whatever is somebody I know and like and respect and root for mm -hmm. a whole lot. 
So I wanted to watch it. Um, it was an interesting night, but I just want to say one thing. First, I just want to say, I want to preface what I'm about to say by saying this. I think award shows are dumb as fuck. I think they are the antithesis of what art is supposed to be. I think art is just that, man. It's an expression of how you're feeling or what you're thinking as an artist. And then for somebody to say what you feel or what you think or what you create, nah, isn't as good as that one, is so subjective. It, you, it, and you're, usually you're asking a bunch of older people who are in this group. Right. You're not watching, you're not asking young people or Justin Bieber would have won every Grammy ever, ever, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> so me, like, sorry. it's so subjective and it's such a specific group of people who are voting. Yeah. Okay. People, it's why the audience awards or the people choice is oftentimes pretty different than the Oscars or the, right? right. Okay. So let me just say right off the bat, I think, it's terrible pitting everybody. It's so weird to me that you would have an album that would win, a, that would sell a gazillion or be downloaded a gazillion times. You would sell a gazillion tickets and that you could somehow be disappointed because a group of people didn't think your album was as good as somebody else's. Right. A group of people, by the way, who probably aren't buying your album. They're, they're, right, hundred okay. percent. A group okay. of people who don't even like they're not even the the music makers. They're not right. even part of that I, that part of the industry. I don't like, I don't know who votes for the Grammys. Okay, so Grammys. so and but I do know Grammys, Oscars. A lot of that has to do with how much money you spend going in. Okay, so let me just say right off the bat, so against it. I let me just also say the way Jelly handled not winning, and I'm not going to say losing, not winning. Because this is no way this dude is losing. No. Look at his life. Look at the many people he's touched. Look mm -hmm. at where he's come from. Look at the tickets he's selling, the music he's making, the differences he's making. He didn't lose anything. He just mm -hmm. didn't win this one. Mm -hmm. But he went on his socials and said, hey, everybody, stop bad-mouthing. I forget the name of the woman who won. Mm -hmm. She deserved that. But life is good, right? Yeah. Okay. No sourpuss. Understanding the place and all this stuff. I have such a problem with what Jay-Z did ta speaking up for Beyonce. And, and I'm going to throw Kanye in there just for fun. These two dudes acting like she's some sort of underdog who everybody needs to get behind. First of all, how many Grammys has she won? I had you Google that. 29. Who the fuck? How can you say she's not winning Grammys? She's won 29 fucking Grammys. And these, I'm sure, for, for Song of the Year songs, right? Okay. I'm going to say this about her. If the Grammys were about entertainers, she would win every year. She would win every year. And so before I get to my personal opinion about, yo, dude, but you getting up there and trying some bully tactics of like, hey, she, you so, what did he say? She sold more than it. So just by your metrics, yo, guys, it's subjective, but I'm going to tell you objectively as somebody who has no skin in this game. Yo, dude, her music is okay. Her songs, she's had some pretty iconic songs. Her music is okay. It is not groundbreaking. Her voice, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry, everybody. Her voice, compared to us, it's amazing. Compared to the other divas, yo, dude, you know when I didn't even think that? Until I heard her sing next to Jennifer Hudson in Dreamgirls. That's a fucking great voice. Now, I'm not saying she doesn't, but stop. It, her voice is not winning her these. And her music is okay. But there's nothing groundbreaking about, there's nothing groundbreaking about what she's doing. The best entertainer I've seen since Michael Jackson. Okay. She's an amazing entertainer. Absolutely. The, and the reason her concerts and the people go crazy at her concerts it, it, much like when I went to Gaga, dude. Yo, she connects. She makes you feel like you're her best friend. That doesn't mean she puts out the best albums. And the metric with him saying she sold, but dude, that has nothing. If I, 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 I pulled up some things. First of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name some artists 
who have never won a Grammy. Okay. Before you do that, can yeah. I throw in my hot take with the same thing from the Grammys yeah. last night? Not last night, but... Or, or whenever it was yep. this past weekend. Um, I would like to say on that same note, well, look, I think I've voiced my opinion before on the Grammys. I'm with a couple other artists out there, and I'm not saying like I'm first name basis with Drake, but like a lot of people in the industry don't like the Grammys. They call it the Scammies. I think it's the Scammies too. I think the Grammys are fucking stupid. I think that it is so political based on yeah. who wins in certain categories. My prime example is the 2014 Grammy Awards for album, Rap Album of the Year. You let Macklemore and Ryan Lewis beat out Drake, Kanye, and Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick dropped fucking Good Kid, Mad City the year before that. But so here's my thing. But it just goes back to say that you are putting all of these awards, Oscars, Emmys, Grammys, in the hands of these people. Who have don't have a correct who voice. Who knows? I, yeah, who knows? I, I, I would agree. Right. So for me, though, like I, I, in saying that I do believe the Grammys are political, I think the I think they're political, and that's the only reason Taylor Swift won Album of the Year. Because of how, because of just, if you just look at this past year and you look at with the Eras tour and you look at that extra publicity that she got from dating, not she got, but like extra publicity with the NFL games and all this extra shit, I just feel like in their eyes, it would have been wrong to give it to anybody else other than Taylor Swift. Maybe. Yeah. Which I think is kind of bullshit. Maybe. Let me, let me list off for Jay-Z yeah. and everybody else. 29 Grammys already. So I don't know why we're crying for this woman. And by the way... I, I can read it in the comments. Oh, yeah, you just, she's more talented than you'll ever be. True. She's more yeah. successful than you'll ever be. True. You're just jealous. Not true. Okay. Opinions. But, but, Art, artist but, perspective. But, dude, I, I'm not saying that I should win a Grammy. And I'm, sh I'm saying she probably should have won a Grammy for her accolades and for the amount of music and how popular she is. Well, maybe not. She's ever been album of the year. Maybe she's just put out some good hits. All right? Let me tell you some people who have never even won a fucking Grammy. Okay. Okay. Queen. That's a big one. They never won for Bohemian Rhapsody or Another One Bites the Dust. Those are two huge albums. Uh, oh, hey. Oh, those were albums or not, not singles, not song of the year? That was an album? They, they dude. I'm talking another about one, Bites the Dust is an album. Oh, okay. That, that's I was just asking yeah, for they, clarification. But they never won for either one, song or album. Hey, The Who. What? Arguably... One of the 10 most influential rock bands ever. Okay. Yeah, you don't care about that. Nope. Uh, Jimi Hendrix. Never won a Grammy. Okay. Chuck Berry. The arguably godfather of rock and roll. Yep. Never won a Grammy. Journey. Don't Stop Believing. Did not win Song of the Year. What? Who beat them that year? I'm so curious. Uh, dude, how about... Well, Sly and the Family Stone for me is huge because I think they're amazing. Uh -huh. Guns N' Roses. Oof. Appetite for Destruction. Welcome to the Jungle, Sweet Child of Mine. These didn't even win Song of the Year. Where, where, where right? Uh, Depeche Mode, that's for me. I, I like uh, Depeche Mode. Okay. Yo, dude, Patti Smith. Not that you know who that is. Bob Marley. Okay. Rush. Kiss. The Talking Heads. Uh, are you fucking kidding me right now? None of these people have ever won ZZ Top. Have ever won... Uh, a Grammy. And so for you, Janis Joplin, for the Smiths, the Pretenders, I mean, now none of these are as big as Beyonce. The, uh, don't get me wrong. Credence. But, to, but she's won 20 fucking nine. All right, let me go and, and Skinner. Okay. Let me go back and say, okay, and let me, let me get in on you with the, well, she sold more albums. Okay. Well, then let's talk about in the movies, that means whoever grosses the most money should win an Oscar, right? Right. Let me tell you the top 10 people who have, uh, who have, their movies have grossed the most. Okay. Like all, in their entire career. Yep. Okay. All right. You want to know number one? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio? Scarlett Johansson. Has hmm. she won an Oscar? Uh, I'm going to answer that for you. I'm going to say, I, I know the answer is no, but I'm also... Robert Downey Jr., Okay, I guess I won't put it in my Go ahead, put it in. I don't think that Scarlett Johansson has done anything worth being nominated for an Oscar. I'm not saying she does, but for Jay-Z's argument to be she sold more albums than everybody, this isn't clearly about who sells the most. Or Justin Bieber, right? Uh, uh, what's the Cash Me Outside? Didn't her album sell a fucking ton? No. It didn't? Are you sure? No, her OnlyFans did. Whatever. 
Uh, so but, different. But, <laughs> no bag on OnlyFans, by the way. Yeah, I'm not bagging on, on, me neither. Not bagging on it. I'm just saying. But I'm point putting being, it there. That's it's different. It's not a popularity contest. Here, here's the deal. You just might have to swallow the pill, and it's not a tough pill to swallow. Now she's that still overly she successful. Is arguably the most successful solo female ever. Mm -hmm. She sells a shit ton of tickets. She'll sell out everywhere. She's the best entertainer ever. She's got a couple of bangers, but her albums are not worthy of album of the year. It's like saying LeBron's not as good as Jordan. Why do you get upset if you're number two out of 12 million? Do you know what I'm saying? hundred percent. And the fact that they're pitting her like she's some sort of underdog it is so fucking annoying to me. And for him to have to get up there and be like, you know, she is so fucking annoying to me. I don't know why. I, I don't think, and I could be wrong because maybe, but I saw his acceptance speech. I don't think he's pitting her as an underdog. That's not what it feels like to me. For me, because there's a lot of people in the industry who feel like the Grammys are political and they they're are. rigged and a hundred percent. That's my thing. So I don't think she, I don't think he's trying to pit her as an underdog. I think what he's trying to do is to be like, yo, this is a generational talent. She got 29 fucking Grammys. That's what I'm saying. Generational talent. Google, Google most Grammys in history. Google most Grammys in That's history. A good question, actually. I'm curious. And about let's that. see where she's at. And that is what a fucking generational talent is. But you don't get every prize. You don't get every fucking pat on the back. That's just not how it goes, man. Oh, I actually lied. She doesn't have 29 Grammys. She has the most in history. So 32. fuck off with this. <laughs> 32. <Already. laughs> fuck the fuck off. Okay? Stop it. Stop whining about how she, she has been plenty recognized by the Academy 32 fucking times and more than anyone else in fucking history for music that is meh. There's nobody's like, hey, Beyonce changed music this way. Her husband did. I would say Jay-Z changed music more than Beyonce. Do you? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, I, so I would understand she's, that. All she, dude, she sings a good song, man. She's a fucking phenomenal dancer. But t tell me what's special about her. Tell me what's different. She doesn't have Mariah's voice. She doesn't have Gaga's. Dude, Gaga's music and creativity and writing and production is next level. Yeah, okay. I, I would understand that. Look, I like Beyonce's music. Uh, I, I, yeah. think, I think Beyonce's music is good. I think it's fun. I think it kind of can get everybody in a, in a good mood type shit. But, you know, like, I, I, I don't completely agree, but I don't completely disagree with Jay-Z. Uh, I just also, I, I agree with him a little bit because I just know, like, I'm not no, but I just, on how I feel about the Grammys, it's not that I understand where he's coming from, but I understand why he's trying to push a certain like point of pride. And I because listen, I, I yep. agree on that other side of the spectrum of with that political or whatever. Like, and if you're going by what he's saying with more albums sold, tickets sold, whatever, you look at Taylor Swift's Eras tour, you look at her year, she grossed a billion dollars or something like that. Something fucking nuts. But when you look at that, if you're again, you're going by the metric that the metric that Jay-Z was saying on stage. That's the reason Taylor Swift won Album of the Year. Cool, then. Cool, then, but then, that's, that's fine. But then she but like, still shouldn't have won it because Taylor Swift so, made a fucking billion dollars. So if the metric is the amount, then Taylor Swift was won still that wrong, too, right? 100%. 100%. I Did just, you also know that Taylor Swift, she broke the record for Grammys for Album of the Year? She yeah. has four of them now? Yeah, yeah. You want to know what's nuts? Michael Jackson has one. One. Yeah, yeah. yeah one. Yeah, yeah. And, and listen again, dude. I kind of appreciate him sticking up for his wife. I get it. I do too. But you, you are two of the most successful humans in the world. Obviously, arguably the most successful power couple in the world. Yeah. It felt like whining. I get that. And, and, and whining from the mountaintop is annoying as fuck. I get that. Uh, okay, so you ready for this, though? Also, on another power couple note for the both of them, they are both tied right now. With, as the most nominated artists in Grammy history. Both of them have been nominated for a Grammy on any some sort of scale 88 times. That's I, fucking... Something's between I the two of them. They I can't almost listen have a, to it. It bothers the fuck out of me. The two, between the two of them, they have almost 200 Grammy nominations. You That's can't fucking insane. whine from the mountaintop. It is so annoying to me. So insane. Yeah. But I, I also think... I also think... 
May like, I ask you a question? In, in general, like Jay Z has beef with the Grammys, just like in his own personal yep, career. Because I, I think it was something like he wasn't he nominated like nine or ten times before he had actually won a Grammy. Was something weird like that? I don't know, but let me ask you a question. What makes generational? So let's talk about music. What a makes second. a generational talent? What makes generational talent? Is it the amount of <sighs> hits? Is it is it a mute? Is it a song or a record that is lasting? It isn't. So for me, it can't be one singular thing. It can't be like, if, if I'm going to look at it like that, I couldn't even think of one person who I was like, oh, that's a cool album. And then just, they fell off. Let me think. Let me ask that you I would still continue to go back to. Let me ask you this. So let's take a, let's take some, something like Guns N' Roses. Okay. Welcome to the Jungle or Sweet Child. Timeless. Does Beyonce have a song like that? <laughs> yeah. For you. For you. <laughs> yeah. This She's is got single ladies. I might be able to name five off the top of my head. That will be as lasting as those two songs. Hundred percent. Hit me with them. Um, single ladies, definitely. Drunk in love with Jay Z. Okay. A hundred percent. Okay. Um, oh, I might have to go through her like her top five or or music on Spotify. But there's a bunch. That song formation, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But like, my, definitely for sure. Those my point two. being, dude, is that her music is. And I'm not saying it's bad. Everybody, I get it. But it's not, to me, generational. She did not change music. She did not, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I would also say, none uh, of her, I, to me, none of her albums are that. And guys, ask Jacob, I listen to everything. I do just to hear it. And there's a lot of new artists and that I love, dude. That I'm like, holy shit, this is amazing. I put him onto a little bit of Don Tolliver the other week. It was fucking yeah, rad. So I, I don't want to hear anything about you didn't listen to it or, or, that. or I, I don't want to hear any race shit. This is not. This is a strict music opinion. Yes, strict, strict, strict. Music yes, opinion. yes. Now I would say, and crazy in love for Beyonce. Those three right off the top, like that crazy in love. Like if I was doing a a, a runway, that crazy in love is my song. Okay. Like those three songs for me. You put them on you think, in any club, any place with people in my age, older or younger. That's those three songs. Absolutely. So you, I'm going to take Welcome to the Jungle, Paradise City, and Sweet Child. Okay. And I'll take, I'll take Drunk in Love, Crazy in Love, and Single Ladies by Beyonce. Hey, everybody who's listening, what three you take? Well, this is, this is going to be generational. Well, maybe not. Uh, let, I don't know, let, let, let's 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 try to take personal opinion down, and let's say which three songs last longer. That's also going to be generational, though. I don't think so, dude. Because I don't think so. I think the well, okay, go ahead. I oh. think the Welcome to the Jungle that'll get played at the beginning of sports songs, and sports uh, uh, games. That'll all of that stuff. For sure. Maybe. Definitely all the other three I just mentioned too. Not beginning of sports games, but intermissions through the middle of it. Jumbotron, people dancing, Beyonce. I'm excited to That's see what I, everyone thinks. For me, like you're the three that you've chosen have already made their case. They've already proven the point. Like they've been around for 30 years. That's what I'm saying. But agreed. You look at those two out of those three I just named for Beyonce were sub 2010. And in, in already 10 plus years, there's still things that on her discography are three out of the top five most played songs out of everything she has. So those songs will continue to be timeless because the people who also grew up with her music, just like the people who grew up with Sweet Child of Mine and Guns N' Roses, yep. are going to have, it's going to have that same effect on them. I agree. With That's that. why I think it's going to be generational because your generation, like, and that, I'm just going to say your generation for the sake of it, and that Guns N' Roses has already proven its point. But I, I, I can't, I can't officially say yes that Beyonce and her music has proven that point. But I'm pretty close to saying already that those songs are not going anywhere anytime soon. Because you look at single ladies, right? Everybody knows the dance. People made fun of it on SNL. I don't like, know the dance. I know. Show, the dance. show it to me. Can we? Oh, we can't play it, can we? No, it's no. like it's you know she does the the if you like and then you should, and then she gets yeah, up and does the like, bah, 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 bah. yeah. But it's like that's it. That's pretty much all it is. It's just it is? like it, it's she flushes her hand like that, uh -huh. and then she does like a like a she does like 
that, that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. I All love right. that. Yeah. But you know how Sandberg and Timberlake did it on SNL? Yeah. Like, her stuff is already becoming timeless. Okay. That's why for me, it's like, it, it's hard to take between generations unless somebody of your generation is more of a Beyonce fan than they are classic rock. I'm sure there are. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure there are. All right. Well, that's um, interesting. But I, I, but in general, guys, like, I just, I think the art, the award shows are pretty dumb in general. I would agree with that. Um, well, well, let's go back to what you were saying about a generational artist, though. And, and let me just say one last thing. Again, let me reiterate. She's more talented than I'll ever be. She's more successful than I'll ever be. And her music's okay. I just don't understand. 32 Grammys, guys. She's been recognized. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop whining. Yeah, I, I can understand where you're, you're coming with, with that because it's like you guys are you guys are billionaires. Your net worth's oh, crazy. You're doing hell. all these things. Like Jesus you could Christ. retire and you guys would still be top names in your in your in your selective accolades and your selective groups for e for probably the rest of time. Super annoying. Like for me, that Jay Z Black album isn't going anywhere. That's top yeah, ten rap yeah. albums ever. Yeah, he solidified that as him as one of the greats. I think in Beyonce's category as well as an R&B and diva, she may not be at the top for your consideration or for your opinion. I wouldn't really consider her at the top either. I do. I will admit I will choose other people's voices over hers, but I will not take away anything from the work she's put in from going from a, a, a group to chasing her own solo stuff to pretty much becoming one of the largest stars of all time. Like there's, there's, no, there's no bag on that, no dig no, at all. Yeah, but I do love, either. I do love me some Beyonce when By I'm way, drunk. And I'm not digging on, I'm not digging on her either. No, 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 hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. But I, I understand the the frustration coming out of you about what Jay Z says because it's just like it's like you're you're so like I get you guys want to be the best and that's kind of what you do and and all that whatever. Yeah. But it's so nitpicky to be like, well, she hasn't won an album of, album of the year, but she's won 32 other Grammys. So I don't know why this is can, even a conversation. Can I tell you, by the way, but I love her. Her fans are fucking bananas. Bananas! Wait, I'm, I'm about to anger another group <laughs> of fans. Can Which, I tell you? How could you? Who else are you going to anger other than the bees? Listen, this is why I like Miley Cyrus more than Taylor Swift. Ready? Uh, oh, oh, dude, her acceptance speech was amazing. First of all, dude. <laughs> it was awesome. And I can't imagine what it's like to be Taylor Swift. It's, it's, it's 16, right? Didn't everybody know who she was? I think it was 16 or 17. Yeah, something like that. And so it's really hard to develop as a human. It just is. And to know how to hold yourself and carry yourself. Her complete, and this includes the football games and the Grammys, her complete overreactions to everything seems so put on because she knows people are watching her. Of course. Every minute. This is, and by the way, guys, I love her. I love her music. She's still a real young person. I think this is, you know, this is how she's learned how to react. But Miley, on the other hand, is about as fucking real as it gets. <laughs> yeah. The way she does her art, the way she sings. I think that's why she's attracted to rock and roll. It feels super raw. Yeah, and edgy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And, but I fucking love her. I loved her speech. I'm so glad she won a Grammy. I was rooting for her. I think as, like, she's the exact type of artist that I like to follow. Yeah, I get that. The exact type. I get it. But, but, but like, this is why just watching them in the Grammys, and again, no knock on Taylor Swift, everybody. I, you, Jacob knows I am a fan. I'm not. But <laughs> why I like Miley more than Taylor is just, you could just watch the Grammys and see that. There see the was just, there's just an authenticity yeah, 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 yeah. that is impossible for Miley Cyrus to hide. Yeah, I, I, I do love it. I loved her hair last night. I love the whole outfit. Not last night. Or Grammy, sorry. I just like, I've, I've seen clips about it. That's why I think okay, it's last okay. night. Um, I, I loved her. I love the outfit. I loved the hair. Um, I loved the speech. Uh, I, yeah, I loved everything uh, about her when she was on stage. It was great. It was really good. Yeah. But back to the thing about a generational artist, yeah. right? Like for me, for me, a generational artist has to be consistent. You have to have an artist that is kind of like when he put, when they, when they, he, she, whoever puts out an album, it, it like, how who, who can I say? Um, oh, I love Wiz Khalifa, mm -hmm. right? His first three studio albums, Fire. Loved them. Went and saw two of them in concert, right? Everything after that just tanked. And I get it. You have to evolve as an artist and you you have to go where you want to go in order to keep 
wanting to do this. Do you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you, as an artist in any category, you don't want to get stuck being known for the same exact thing for your entire career. Do you know what I'm saying? It's interesting. Okay, and, and let me just say this because when we we had a chance to talk to Dave Grohl, Dave Grohl, when I was on Chelsea lately, Dave hosted for a week. Right. And we were allowed to talk to him at about four or five o'clock every day. He would answer questions. Right. But he said something once about, you know, sometimes people say Foo Fighter albums sound the same. And he's like, yeah, it's a Foo Fighters album. And when people buy Foo Fighter albums, I want them to, to hear the Foo Fighters. Yeah. And if I want to do a different, I'll just start a different project. And so it's, it's a different mentality. I like his mentality. Yeah, it's a different mentality. Because yeah. you can still evolve as an artist, yes. but not completely change your sound. Yes. You can evolve as an artist with your lyrics. You can evolve with your artists, uh, evolve as an artist with your cadence, with your melodies, with, with a whole bunch of different shit. But, but when you change, or from me, when it looks like you're just completely trying to change the artist I fell in love with, it, it, it taints it for me. Now you look at Drake or J. Cole or Kendrick Lamar. Those dudes consistently, from album number one to features on other products or on, on projects, fire, 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 fire. Everything is good that they put out. So yeah, there are some songs on certain albums that I'm like, yeah, this is a skip. Yeah. But I, I, there are only a couple albums, really, that I can think of that I will not be skipping a song top to bottom. Okay, but, but so it's get back to what that means. Consistency and longevity for me is what really comes what down gem- to it. So you, it, ha- it, like you have to be in your time where you're either at the top or in the realm. You have to be consistently, for me, putting out good work. And, and putting out something that 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 I'm going to want to listen to, I'm excited to see you put out. So does it have anything to do with them being different or influencing younger artists or anything like that? <sighs> no, not for me. Not for, like, for me, a generational talent doesn't have to be somebody who's influencing the younger generation. See, for me, it does. For me, you can be a great artist and, and have hits, but to me, a generational talent is somebody that not only is putting out bangers, but who other artists coming up. Yeah. Like to me, a, a band that doesn't get enough play or talk about being generational is Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath influenced almost every rock group that came after them. Right. Okay. I, I, I wonder, I'm not as familiar with Drake's sound, but was it unique enough when it came out that other people were like, yeah, I'm going to do that Drake shit. I think Drake was kind of like your very first sad boy rapper. Like if I, if you look at, remember, okay, you know the album that he was on Chelsea when he was there at Chelsea and you brought me home a, a copy of it. Yeah. And I said, why didn't you take me to go meet Drake? And you said, because you had school. And I said, fuck school. Yeah. Right. I okay. think the first thing I said is who's Drake. Bingo. So <laughs> <laughs> that album, which he did win a Grammy for in 2013 yeah. for rap album of the year. It's called Take Care. That album for me, I love, 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 love. For me, whew, hard to say because Drake's put out some bangers recently. My favorite Drake album. Okay. Take Care 20, 2012 is when that was released because he won the 2013 Rap Album of the Year. Love that album. But that album consists of not only bangers, but Sad Boy Drake. Yeah. Like there's a song called like Doing It Wrong or, or Marvin's Room and it's just straight up like... I'm drunk. I miss you. Like, so did does his, he treat you better? This, like, it, it's it's sad boy rap. And did his singing. lyrics make other people start to write like that? When after Take Care came out, we didn't really see a string of like sad boy rappers. Like Drake was kind of the only one. But then came onto the scene is what I'd like to call those like, not emo rappers, but the dudes who look like they were emo in high school and listened to my cam and and like. Not Metallica or Metallica, but like all those, like they wear have piercings everywhere. They dye their hair. They're in all yeah, black. My, the, the, uh, Metallica is not emo. Metallica is metal. Yeah. You, but you know, like like yeah. sad boy. Yeah, so, yeah. so and then when they came onto the scene, like like Lil Uzi, Juice World, Trippy Red, Lil Peep, um, Triple X, three of the six of those dudes are dead. Um, but like they, their rap and their lyrics was very much more emotional and sad and they sang a little more in it. I'm not going to say whined, but like, you know, with the auto tune and whatnot, it sounds like whining to me. And, and that music, I was just never really a fan of. I yeah. called it screamo rap is what I called it because that's just what it felt like. Like it was like that juice world song. I can't sing it because we get demonetized. Yeah. 
but it's the the lyrics are I still see your shadows in my room. Uh uh can't break up the love that I gave you. Like it's just like it's 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 emo, it's sad boy shit. So after Drake came out with Take Care, we saw a lot more dudes hit the scene with being sad boy rappers or emo rappers so or stuff that, like that. If you're influencing the people underneath you, to me that means generational. Yeah. I, I I don't here's the thing though, that's what I'm saying is I don't know if Drake was the influence for that. But that's what happened. Yeah. Because those dudes' sounds, those six dudes that I named, sounded nothing like Drake's music. Do they sound the same? Those six dudes? Yeah. Exactly the same. Got it. Like all of them, like that's that subcategory. Like all those dudes I named, uh, Ski Mask, and all those dudes. Like, you know. There's somebody named Ski Mask? I think he's called Ski Mask. Hold on. I think it's like Ski Mask Slump God or something. I don't know if I don't oh know his my name. God, that's an amazing. Ski mask slump god. Hold on, let me let me get the yeah. Ski ski mask the slump god. Yeah, 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 that's his name. The slump god. The slump god. What does that mean, slump god? I don't know, but I don't like any of his music. I like it, and I've never heard it. I promise you, you're not gonna like it. Ski mask the slump god. How am I not gonna like that, dude? I'll I'll play you some after. Can I tell you what I've been watching? Sure. Okay. So, guys, for those of you who don't know, I have. By the way, are your buttons fucked up? Are they? I don't think so. Well, because there's two buttons right up there, but I only see one thing. I've just been staring at it this whole time, and there it's not off. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe it is. I think it is because I think I think uh, that one you just hooked up there is supposed yeah, to go right, on top. Right. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say I was like it's looked off this entire time. Yeah, but I didn't know because I couldn't see the bottom of your shirt. Are well, you sure? No, it's not off. No, it's right. Yeah, it was right. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because it because the button was here, but then the hole was here, and I was like, this is freaking me out. I'm not going to lie. Okay, what are you watching? So Why is your foot over here still? Uh, my foot hasn't uh, moved. I keep going up and down over it. I, I know you do. You keep kicking it. Your, your foot is the one that's moving. Mine is not. I'm trying to keep my feet back here. But, um, um, I am watching. So for those of you who don't know, I have four grandkids. None of them are Jacobs. Correct. Uh, but my oldest son has four kids. And his oldest son is into this show on Netflix, an animated show called Dragon Prince. Okay. It's the title is something Dragon Prince. Okay. And so it's like this Japanese animation. Okay. And so I watched, he told me he liked it. And I went, and I go, how many seasons are there? And he said five. And I said, okay, I'm going to watch it so we can talk about it. Great. And he was like, great. Can I tell you? Not a kid show? It's pretty good. Oh, is it? Yeah. I love that. It's pretty good. This, like, I <sighs> laughed a couple times. I've been laughing. I'm, the story is not, I, maybe because my bar was set so low. I was you like, this is going to be the fucking worst thing I've ever seen. Because it's an 11 year old. Yo, dude, pretty good. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now. Animation, animated TV show. Is it a, is it adult animation? Animation technically, like how would you? I don't know what you mean by that. Adult animation. Family Guy, American Dad, no, no, Archer. No, no, no. It's, an, it's like anime animation. Oh, okay, yeah. But I mean, anime animation is still pretty adult because they're pretty gory. They're pretty not censored. They're uh, well, I mean, like the ones in my generation that my my friends are watching right. are not family friendly and are very adult animation. Like this people's not, heads are exploding. No, 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 no. This okay. is not that you, you, I mean, if she's, if, and I, we're not going to mention any of their names Yep, because we're going to keep them as anonymous as we can. Yes. But if she is saying that he, if the mom, if her, yeah, his mom, I, I got you, she's pretty on the ball about that stuff. Right. 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 So, but, but, um, but it, yeah, but, uh, animation, I'm telling you, it's man, pretty great, dude. dude there's, Dragon so, Prince. there's so many good animations out. Like there's so many good adult animations on Netflix, regular animations, all of it. I, I, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of animation. That, what was that rock and roll animated film? Probably from the seventies or eighties. Uh, heavy metal. Have you ever seen heavy metal? Mm -mm. You should see heavy metal. It's worth a just a, a peruse. Okay, I definitely smoked some weed before I. Did I smoke weed before I watch anything? Yo, dude, <laughs> should we talk about the podcast we did with Yola? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh. Oh my God. Dude, that might have been the fastest three hours. We ever. did a three hour podcast with our buddy Thomas Dopaziola and Marty, his yep. producer. I was pretty high. Yeah. I know you were. Can I tell you uh, something that happened? 
I was going to ask you, can we talk about Because yes. like I was sitting there. Okay. So after we did the show. By the way, just explain the show. And so all. so the uh, uh, Thomas, his name is Dobaz Yola. Uh, his Instagram is. He does a podcast called the Dope as Usual Podcast. Um, we love Tom. Thomas and we've been, you know, we've talked to him for probably four years going on now. Super nice dude. Um, and pretty much he invites people to come on the podcast, talk about stories, talk about whatever, and just and smoke weed the entire time. Yep. Which not, not everybody smokes, but a lot of people do. We did. Yep. Um, <laughs> I had six joints rolled up before we walked in Yo, there. We, jo- we were smoking some of that Joey Diaz uh, laughing, laughing gas. gas. Yo. Yo, if you're in Los Angeles, that's the weed you should be buying. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. And so, uh, and usually the last couple times we've been there, you have taken some mushrooms because that's just kind of your deal. It's kind of mm-hmm. your thing now, mm-hmm. which I do kind of like. It's fun. And so we did a three-hour podcast and I'm not going to lie, throughout the entire thing, you seemed great. I could tell you were pretty high, but nothing ever gave gave me the thought of thinking, oh, he might be too high. Or Really? Never, never. Oh, you, I felt that way. I know. That's what I'm saying. You held it together great. But I will say, the minute the cameras cut off, I saw your shoulders do this. <sighs> like, you just relaxed a little bit. I could tell there was something in that last 30 minutes that was a little tense for you. Yeah. And then right after, you sat on the couch, silent, for about 10 minutes while the four, me, Marty, Thomas, and his uh, fiance, Rosie, spoke for a little bit. And then I looked at you and I go, you good? You go, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to step outside for a second. And then we went and stepped in the other room just so you could get some fresh air. And you seemed a little better right after that. But what, what, is that what you want to talk about? Because what was that? I've never seen that before. I, may, I thought maybe it was like a little too hot in that room because it was warm. And also I had smoked four joints to my face. Marty had smoked three and Tom had smoked four or five and you had smoked three. So there was just a lot of not circulation in that room. Do you remember what I was mumbling to myself on the drive home? Yes. What was I talking about? I need to slow down. Is what you kept saying. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do. I need to slow down. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna slow down the art tour, but I need to slow down because I can tell you that I, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm, I have a lot of energy. And I feel really strong mm-hmm. in my life, mm-hmm. in my being, in my body. I really felt like my battery was on like 5%. Interesting. I've never felt like that before. Not mm-hmm. that kind of... You were tired. Whew, I don't know if tired is even the right word. It felt like my life force was draining. It's really interesting. I really felt... and. I started to think about the trips to LA and I don't, it's going to have to be something special to get me to LA from here on out. Uh, it's, it's going to have to be, Hey, you got, we're going to do three podcasts yeah. or like, you know, the Netflix show, yeah, yeah. but I travel enough. I'm away from your mom enough. I, I beat up my body enough, mm-hmm. but that trip felt incredibly draining. I was having a hard time that when I went and sat down, I didn't even have, I just didn't have the energy to stand up, to talk, to, I was just trying to gather up enough energy to be able to walk, honestly, get up and walk outside. I, 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 I don't know what it was, but it felt, Mm, scary isn't the right word, but eye-opening. It felt like... it's the first time you really felt something like that. It felt my body was like, yo, dude. Slow down. This is... And, and, and I know a lot of people are going to be like, is the drugs? I don't find mushrooms and weed to be those kind of drugs. I, no, and, that- and I could just be... Have my blinders on and tell myself that because I like them. <laughs> but it's not booze. It's not coke. It's none of that stuff that I know actively drains people's kind of life force. Right. Um, it was a culmination of a lot, mm-hmm. but it was um, a buildup. Yeah, that buildup that just hit its limit. I just, it was like my body just pulled the plug. Yeah, and it was the only time I can remember thinking to myself, and I've been sick before and felt like, oh, dude, I really need to get my shit together mm. or get, but just like life energy to be this low and to feel that weak 
and almost frail mm-hmm. in that moment was eye opening. Yeah, was like, oh my, you, my body is telling me to. It, it's giving me a warning. The mushrooms gave me a warning too. Interesting. They. I don't want to. Tell, this is. I can tell you this now. But the mushrooms gave me a warning in a, there were a couple times I saw my reflection half skeleton. When? It, on the ride home, looking in the window. Um, and in the bathroom, where I looked up and half of my face didn't look skeleton, but looked so tired. Like malnourished kind of yeah, move? Just like I was, and it was like, my brain was like, hey, this is what's happening in here. And this is what's going to happen if you don't take this a This is what's happening in here. It was, it was eye-opening. It was one of the reasons I was so quiet. Hmm. I was just well, on the ride home, especially. And I know I was mumbling to myself. You were. But I, I, it, was a, it, was, it was an eye-opening. I need to slow down. I haven't, I, I haven't been telling you to slow down from a comedy aspect, but I've been telling you to pace yourself for months. Yeah, I, I just want everyone to know, and apologies ahead of time, there may be a couple dates that I cancel that are on the tour right now. Just because I, I love this, I want to do it for as long as I can. In order to do it for as long as we want to, it can't be for f- every weekend out of it the month for just six can't. or seven months. As much as I love doing it and as much as I love traveling with you, I have to... We like our... We like... You like your wife, I like my girlfriend, and we like to be home. I also just need to recharge. Yeah. Hundred percent, dude. I need to recharge. Hundred percent. I didn't want to tell you that that night because I know that you, you did tell me that that night. What? That you were slowing down. Oh no, not that I, but that that I saw death in the mirror. <laughs> but it was. Um, well, I yeah. wasn't. I wasn't on mushrooms. You could have told me that. Yeah, How, that's true. However, if I was on drugs, you would, shouldn't have told me that. So no, no, I'm no. glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but that was what it was. It was a great podcast. So much fun. Three hours, dude. We of ridiculousness, guys. I was pretty high at one point. I was sitting across from Thomas, and he was the a boat, oh yeah. A boat was the best way I could explain it, but it was like he was re- up. And when I mean boat, almost like a George Washington crossing the Delaware, the type. Delaware. Type I love boat. that. And he was up, and he was sitting across from me, about as far away as we are. Yeah, and but he just was elevated. It was such a weird. <laughs> you think? Can we get demonetized for that? No, but that's. Not... <laughs> what do you think that is a? I don't know. You said George Washington, so I was thinking some fucking. You said George Washington crossing to the de- George Washington crossing you the Delaware. Think that's the song they played. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. You <laughs> were <laughs> they great if George Washington was just crossing the Delaware chanting USA. Dude, that, from what I understand, you know, I've been getting into history podcasts. Have you? Yeah. You're getting old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are getting old. <laughs> that is the, <laughs> that's how I know you're close to 60. Yeah. I started listening to World War II podcasts and then my free time to further my education. You old fuck. <laughs> Get out of here with that shit. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, the oh, sad kind of old. That might be one of the oldest things <laughs> I've ever said. <laughs> Next thing I know, you're going to say, I've started knitting. <laughs> I did. I made this sweater. <laughs> All right, dude. God damn. Tell everybody what the deal is. First and foremost, thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who comes out, for everyone who's listening. Buffalo, we can't wait to see you guys. God damn it, that was funny. (laughs) Comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Um, Like he said, we may or may, we may be taking a couple dates out, but yo, go look at those dates. Tell a friend, tell a motherfucker. We're we're in so many cities uh, in these first six months. I believe we're also in Canada at some point in time. So come check us out, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. LA, May 9th, New York in April. 
April 13th, I believe, is the Gramercy date. Right, yeah. April 13th uh, in, in New York at the Gramercy. May 9th at the Bourbon Room in Los Angeles Bourbon in Hollywood. Room. The Bourbon Room. Bourbon. Um, again, you guys always ask, uh, how can, what can we do to support? Uh, tell somebody. Tell somebody about this. Tell somebody about the shows. Um, or, or just bring someone. We always have a good time. Every show we do is always so, so, so much fun. Uh, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Uh, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. <laughs> Uh, yes. And I think a lot of people are misunderstanding what our shows are because they see clips of you and I on stage together. That is at the end of the show, guys. It's still a straight up stand up show. He does stand up. I do stand up. And then we get up there together and fuck about. Um, but I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't really go see duos. We're it's, not. We're not. We're not a duo. We're partners, but we're not like this. The, the, the brand isn't the duo. We all we both yeah. do our own separate thing. And yeah. then we come together to have some more fun at the end. That's right. Um, we and, also may talk some World War II history this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> We're in New York. So, I mean... Why? Is New York World War II history? No, but there are some old people who live in New York. That's true. In Buffalo? Are there any old people in Buffalo? I'm sure there are old people in Buffalo. Probably at your shows. Whoa. Bring some World War, World War, II, World War II history facts, please. He would be... Do not bring any <laughs> facts with you to the show. I don't need any people screaming facts. No, I just wait for the meet and greet. He's going to really oh, enjoy actually, it. actually, that would be good. <laughs> you, can, you can hit me with some facts in the meet and greet. Oh, my God. One thing we're going to do this week, and at every meet and greet from here on out, guys, um, I do free meet and greets, and I'm out there for as long as you want me there. Me too. From here on out, though, the price of a picture will be you subscribing to the podcast. Ooh. So we're going to have a URL code. I'm going to take that picture with you. I'm going to be out there for as long as you want me there. But you want the picture, you're going to have to sign up for the podcast. I like that. I, I don't think that's out of pocket, By the way, do you? Still free. Yeah. Do you think that's out of pocket? No. I don't think all. so either. Not at all. Still free also. Like, that's still technically a free photo. You just have to... Well, of course, yeah. It's still a free photo. Click a button. That's right. Easy. Anything else yet? <laughs> Tell somebody you love them today. Do something nice for someone today. Uh... World War II history. I got nothing else with that one. I was thinking about a joke at the end of it, but yeah, I lost dude. it. For the Big Thompson. For the Big Thompson. I oh. am excited for this next chapter. If the you USS see me, Big Thompson. If you see me walking around your neighborhood in sweatpants with a joint, say what's up. <laughs> Go tell somebody you love that I do something nice for someone today. Or don't. <laughs> <laughs> love you guys. Later. <laughs>